Okay, cool. This is now recorded to the cloud. So, boom, we made it. 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 See, we made it to the last chapter of the Crazy Faith book. We made it to the last chapter of the Crazy Faith book. Everything that I said we was gonna do that I spoke that that I spoke two three months ago, four months three two three I believe four months ago, we I said it was gonna finish it literally the week before Christmas or the basically the the, the uh uh before Christmas before Christmas right so again we have literally done exactly um what we said we was gonna do. And, uh, you know, like I told you all last week, I'm extremely, extremely proud of everybody that stayed consistent, that actually stayed consistent and that actually read this book because um, I'm going to tell y'all, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all this, um, before we jump into the last chapter, guys, before we jump into the last chapter today, in the last chapter, guys, um, we're going to read this chapter together. We're going to read this chapter together. So as we read it, um, if anybody wants to read, like I told you guys, whenever we read it, if, if anybody wants to read tonight, just drop your name in the chat box. You can read um, as well, too. This is our last chapter. And um, yeah, we're going to finish tonight with a bang. So I'm, I'm happy for y'all. I'm excited for y'all. Um, and I'm going to tell y'all why this is a big deal, right? This isn't a big deal to everybody else around y'all, but guess who this is a big deal to? This is a big deal to God. <laughs> like, listen, 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 listen. Listen, this is a big deal to God. And the reason why this is a big deal to God is because I'm going to tell you all this. In life, you're going to have all, all, all of the success. And uh, you're going to have all the things that you want to have in life. But if you have all the success but haven't found Jesus, you haven't learned how to step out in crazy faith, you really have nothing. Like, you really have nothing. And, and the reason why I thought that this, was a, this would be a great experience to read the crazy faith book um like i told you guys before um it's because i told you guys imagine y'all romans 12 2 says don't be conformed by this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and um i i, I said it was a great idea to uh for you guys to read this so you guys can like joshua 1 and 8 says meditate on my word day and night um so you guys can basically meditate on michael todd's thought because he's the author of the book so imagine y'all having Michael Todd's thoughts, Michael Todd's crazy faith, um, and y'all applying that to every area of y'all life at y'all current age right now. Do you know what 2022 is going to look like for you? Because this is the thing. Before God does anything with finance, he moves you out in faith first and everything else follows. Faith first and then everything else follows. See, now you guys have built up a new comfort zone. Now you guys have seen the standards and other people, other individuals' lives um who 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 um exempted exponential and supernatural crazy faith right so now you guys can take that and now you guys can apply it to y'all situations so it says that uh the bible you know your faith can move mountains right so understanding that y'all crazy faith about to move mountains in y'all life what's mountains that what's mountains just things that's not going good not Y'all get the picture. I don't want to get too deep. I don't want to get too deep. I promise you, I don't want to get too deep. But I just want to paint the picture, you know, let you guys know. So, um, yeah. So, pretty much, at, I'm going to tell you how it is. Pretty much after today, after we read this today, um, we're going to start another book um, in January. We're going to start another book in January. So, uh, we're going to start another book in January. So, we're not going to have a Bible uh, study next thursday but we're going to continue the week after next not next thursday but the week after next right because uh this is going to give me some time to be able to talk to god hear from god and um see what book he want he wants us to read in 2022 i kind of think i have an idea but uh we're gonna see we're gonna see right so cool 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 how does that sound to y'all if that sound good drop some tools in the chat box i mean how does that sound to y'all Drop some tools in the chat box. That's let me know. For y'all that's watching on YouTube, Land, I'm proud of y'all too for actually following along. If you missed um the previous uh videos that we did, the previous sessions that we had, go look on my YouTube channel. You guys can see it as well too. Um, 
but nevertheless 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 um cool so so today we're, we're reading about um uh so today we're reading chapter 11 um and, oh this is what i want to say this is what i want to say before we jump into this so guys i'm gonna tell y'all this i'm gonna give y'all the cheat code to life see the whole world is shifting the whole world is shifting the whole world is shifting if y'all didn't know if y'all didn't know that and one thing i'm gonna tell y'all is this the whole world is shifting and as the world shifts, and you want to ask yourself this question, you're hearing about the metaverse, you're hearing about all these opportunities, all, all these great things in the world, in the world. But as the world's shifting, the most important shift that y'all don't want to miss is the shift with God, because God is shifting. <laughs> God is shifting. So you got to ask yourself, so, are you shifting with the world or are you shifting with God? That's what I'm gonna. That, that's what I want to tell you. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all. And then following God, sometimes you're gonna be the only person following God. You're gonna be the only person following God, and nothing's wrong with that because it's the thing. The world isn't looking for Him, so that's why they don't find Him. But for you, it's the reason why you showed up. It's the reason why you're listening to this 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 recording, this video, because you hear from Him, and because you hear from Him, it's it's. See, it says um. Purpose is established through a multitude of count, uh, counsel. Counsel. Purpose is established through a multitude of counsel. You see what I'm saying? When God's ready to take you to the next level, He sends you count. He sends uh, count, counsel in your life. He sends you someone that can break it, break the word down to you because that's what He did for me. But I hope that makes sense. I just thought I had to say that. That that was on my heart. Um, but let's get it. So chapter eleven, saving faith. Let's get it. So. Um, I can read unless do anybody want to start off? If not, I'm gonna go ahead and take over. I can start off reading first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off reading first. I'm gonna start off reading first, and then um, Lena, I'm gonna call on you next. All right, let's get it. So, chapter eleven, saving faith. Um, Christmas in July or or whenever. Um, has it? I'm on the top of page one ninety two. Has it ever occurred to you that the events leading up to Jesus' birth didn't happen at Christmas time? It's pretty obvious once you think about it. Christmas didn't exist yet, but sometimes we get, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going so fast. Let me open the call up and pray. I feel my Holy Spirit saying pray. I'm sorry. So real quick, you know, our Father, you know, art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done as it is in heaven here on earth. Father, we just want to, Father, I just want to, Father, we, we just want to thank you for, you know, allowing us to, um, you know, even, you know, get this information, Father. Uh, Father, we pray that we just decrease and you just increase in us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just lead the way you just lead the conversation. You just guide us and give us revelation to the words that we are about to actually hear. Speak to us. Give us clarity. You know exactly what's on all of our hearts. So we ask that you would just give us clarity to the answers that we actually want to hear um, from you. So we ask that you speak to us, speak through me. I'm just a vessel. We just vessels, Father God. And um, we just thank you for everything you have done. Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know that your love endures forever through all generations. So we know that if you did it back then, you're going to do it again today. We know you already did it for us in our future. It's already done. Father, that's the type of faith that we actually have. We stepping out in crazy faith, Father God. And um, just let tonight blow our minds, right? Make your presence be known. Let us feel your spirit um, on this webinar tonight, Father. In your heavenly name, we pray, amen. Let's get it. All right, cool. So, but sometimes we get hung up on talking about the birth of Jesus only during the month of December. But from Mary and Joseph's point of view, all the craziness unfolding in their lives happen on a regular Tuesday or whenever. And since God shows up in our lives on a regular Tuesday or whenever, Jesus' earthly parents to be are awesome models for how to live in crazy faith. So whether you're reading this on Christmas or the 4th of July or Father's Day or any day ending in Y, get in the Christmas spirit with me for the next few minutes uh when we're hot humble open and transparent with one another we admit life is crazy 
right? Our families are crazy. Our jobs are crazy. Politics are cra is crazy, right? And here's the thing. It's the same for Joseph and Mary. Their homeland is ruled by the foreign military superpower of that time, the Roman em em um, Empire, right? And the Romans have no time or patience for Jewish worship, customs, belief, and traditions. They want the Jews to get with the pagan program and stop acting like they are God's special chosen people. This is religious and this is religious and cultural persecution, massive in, um, inequality, right? And political unrest all around. Does any of this sound familiar? Anyways, life is already crazy and that's exactly when God shows up. I'm gonna I'm underline that. Life is already crazy and that's when God shows up. Y'all can underline words that stand out to y'all. Mary is engaged to marry Joseph, but before their wedding, the gospel of Matthew tells us she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, Joseph, to whom she was engaged with a religious man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly, right? As if life isn't crazy enough, the Holy Spirit comes to disrupt all their plans. In my holy imagination, Mary breaks the news to her fiance, and then Joseph goes for a long, angry, frustrated walk, muttering to himself the whole way. Why she got me messed up? Why, why she got to mess, mess it all up? We made promises. We had dreams. We were going to travel and have adventures before settling down to have Joe Jr. and his little brothers and sisters. And now Mary them messed it up. Joseph gets so agitated and bent out of shape in his emotions that he does what most of us do when our feelings get too much uh our, when our feelings get to be too much he takes a nap that's a fact that is a fact you go to sleep when you tired <laughs> you gotta you gotta sleep when you tired and stress that's funny <laughs> he, he takes a nap <laughs> all that energy but then an angel of the lord appeared to him in a dream joseph son of david the angel said do not be afraid to take mary as your wife for the child within her was conceived by the holy spirit and she has and she will have a son, and you are to, uh, page, uh, top of page one, uh, 194, you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, if I would, now, if I were Joseph, I'd be like, be straight with me. <laughs> Life is already crazy. I'm already in this entirely jacked up situation, and now you're going to give me instruction plus instruction and responsibilities. Let me be, let me be straight up with you. Yep. Crazy word. Right. I know for a fact that you've never been in Joseph's exact situation, but I'm willing to bet you felt the same way in your own set of crazy circumstances. That's good. That's a fact. I know I have really right now on top of everything else that's going on. Now, God's asking me to do something extra crazy. This is how God does. Um, this is how God does time and time and time again. Why? Because our God loves to use crazy things that don't make sense to sensible people to confound anybody who thinks he's, he's got it all figured out. Check this. God chose things the world uh, considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. That is a fact. And he chooses things, right? That is a fact. And he chooses things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 and uh, 9. God chose Joseph and Mary to play essential roles in his rescue operation for uh, humanity for the same reason he chose a 20, this, this, this is good, page 195. It says, God chose Mary, Joseph and Mary to play essential roles in his rescue operation for humanity for the same reason he chose a 20-something Black man with a mug shot in, a, in six months of community college to grow a local church and start a worldwide movement. Not making sense is God's mode because if it made sense, we, we, we could take credit. That's a fact. Take note, his plans always make sense at, at on the back end. 
um, when we're through to the other side. But at the beginning, straight up crazy. God gets the uh, ball rolling for our journey of crazy faith by first giving a crazy word. That's good. God gives a crazy word. It might come in a dream like for Joseph uh, during early morning prayer in your daughter's bedroom, like, like, like for me, or from a friend who texts out of the, a from from a friend who texts you out of the blue because you've been on his mind. It could come from a preacher on Sunday morning, um, a book you read before bed on Wednesday, or a TikTok you watch, uh, waiting for you Friday afternoon teeth cleaning. However, it comes, it won't make sense to anyone else. For that matter, it might not make sense to you. God's crazy word often comes in the darkest of times. I like that. God's crazy word often comes in the darkest of times, right? God gives provision. He gives he gives provision in the valley. He doesn't give vision on the mountaintops. He gives vision in the valley, right? God's crazy word often comes in the darkest of times. We already talked about the dark and crazy times Joseph and Mary were living um, through, but your but your crazy word from God will also come in darkness. And that's a good thing because Psalms 119 says your word is a, right, that's good. The reason why the word come in dark times is because it says that your word is a lamp to guide my feet, right? And the light from my path. When God's crazy word comes, it gives just enough life for you to take the next, next step. That's good. That's good. It says my righteous walk by faith, right? The next, then the next, then, then the next, and then the next, you obey, you forgive, you meet with him in prayer, right? You take a risk, you wait on him and serve his people. <clears throat> on the top of page 196, when his crazy word comes, don't get paralyzed trying to please other people. That's a fact. Of course, we would all like everyone to agree with God's crazy word to us, but his timing from but his timing for them isn't necessarily his timing for you. That's good. It would be convention, it would be convenient and uh comfortable, right? Yeah, comforting for Mary if an angel appeared to her and Joseph at the same time. That that's that's a fact. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run that back. It would be convenient and comforting. For Mary, if an angel appears to her and Joseph at the same time, that is a fact. Mm. But the fact that God waits to give a crazy word to Joseph makes his crazy word to her any less true, timely, or powerful, right? Crazy word. Once you get a crazy word, it's only a matter of time before the enemy attacks with crazy worry. That's good. Once you get a crazy word, it's only a matter of time before um, the enemy attacks with crazy worry. And we've seen all he can do is make su suggestions. That's good. I got to pause just for one second. Um, that's good. Because when God gives you a word, he speaks faith. The enemy can only make suggestions and say, like, oh, man, you're not good enough. Or, like, like, yeah, all the enemy can do is just make suggestions. You can just choose to believe that or not. That's it. Yo, you, you have, you, in your conscious mind, you have the ability to accept ideas or reject ideas. If it's a negative idea, oh, that's the enemy. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Boom, boom, boom. You got to replace it. But nevertheless, but when those sneaky whispers come into dark darkness so thick, you can't see two steps ahead. They can be so hard to ignore facts. About a minute and a half after I finished writing down the vision of this transformation church, moving into the Spirit Bank event center, all the how questions flooded my mind. God, how in the world you you gonna take a crazy black dude born in South Tusla, 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 move him to the north, north Tusla, Tusla, however you said, <laughs> to take over a church for a white man? Let me be myself and build a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multiplying a multi campus church for a matter uh for that matter how in the world are you going to touch the whole world through our little north tosla tosla ministry how how for a minute there i got stuck in the how and forgot about the who that's good don't get stuck in the how if god spoke a word he spoke a word how is gonna happen mm, the who that is a fact this reminds me of one of 
This reminds me of one of the time I went to a super boozy restaurant for dinner at the invitation of a multi-millionaire. It was so boozy that there were no prices on the menu. Now, someone who's used to feeding the whole family at Cheddar's for 13, I mean, for th- uh, 32.99, I remember them days, I remember them days. <laughs> for 32.99, the lack of prices was uh, anxiety uh, inducing. Order anything you want um is what my host said but all i could think about was not being greedy or offending him so we're sitting there while the server awkwardly waits on me to order and my host goes what's the problem um i i can't decide between the filet mignon and the duck he looks at the server and says he'll have both Mm." and i like and i'm like hold on hold on i'm not hungry enough to eat both he shrugs so um, you 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 just take the extras to go. Don't 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 worry so much, right? Mm, that's how God be, right? That has stuck with me, and been and that has stuck with me and became a mantra as I step out in crazy faith again and again. And now I'm passing it on to you. Don't worry so much. You are hurt. Or you are hereby authorized not to worry. God knows exactly what He's doing. He has more than enough to pay the bills. That is a fact. Facts. As a matter of fact, it's already paid. That is a fact. God don't live on time. The spirit is omnipresent. God doesn't live on time. It's already done. My friend, God is more interested in providing for your purpose and destiny than that rich dude was for duck and uh, filet me young. Um, you might be worried about the how but he ain't worried uh, one little bit. Paul wrote to the Philipp- Philippians uh, Christians some straightforward advice for times when they got anxious. Don't worry. It doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Don't worry about, and this is my favorite scripture. Don't worry about, it says worry adds nothing but takes everything. That is a fact. That is a fact. Don't worry about uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you experience God's peace, uh, which exceeds anything we can understand. <clears throat> His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians uh, 4. Um, that's Philippians 4, um, verses 6 to 7. Pray about it. Pray about what? Everything. The job, I should take everything. The person, I should marry everything where I should go on vacation, everything, right? You you may not get the car or the house at exactly the moment you wanted it, but you will experience God's peace that passes all understanding, right? And let me tell you from experience, worrying asks nothing but takes everything. That is, a, that, is, that is a fact. It takes your peace. It takes your sleep. It takes your everything, facts. Except the peace that only God can give. He's big enough to handle the how. So now you're talking about the crazy walk. You got a crazy word. You're letting God deal with the crazy worry and prayer. And now it's time to walk the crazy walk. We talk time. We talk time and again in this book about the daily disciplines of faith, about turning lazy faith into active faith, about doing our own prophetic work and then about faith expressing itself as love through good works i like that faith expresses itself as love through good works faith expresses itself as love through good works at some point we just have to decide and then get walking mary and joseph gets their crazy word and you know they must have some crazy worry facts but if they going if but if they are going to make it from their hometown of Nazareth to Bethlehem uh Bethlehem Jesus uh prophesied birthplace they have to start walking those 90 miles can't walk themselves right uh page 199 as crazy as it sounds have you started walking if you're waiting to see uh the whole trip in advance Receive this word from 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, right? We walk by faith, not by sight. That is a fact. This scripture always takes me back to the 90s TG, TGIF lineup on ABC um, between uh, Urkel asking, did I do that? 
uh, in my junior high school, in my junior high relationship go to Panga, I don't know, on Boy Meets World. Y'all remember Step by Step, the theme song says Step by Step, Day by Day. And that's exactly how we walk the crazy walk of faith, step by step, one foot in front of the other, day by day and daily faith. That is a fact, daily faith. That's an affirmation, daily faith. If you can see it, you don't need faith. If you can't see it through faith is a requirement, right? Even if it means you have to take baby steps, it's time to get walking crazy way. Joseph and his bride don't take one step and then instantly arrive in Bethlehem. 90 miles is a long walk. Y'all, that's South, South uh, Tusla, uh, to, to, uh, Tusla, 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 to Oklahoma City, City, Dallas to Waka, I don't even know, Chicago to South Bend, Manhattan to Philadelphia, San Francisco, San Francisco to uh, Medesto, and we're not talking about firing up the escalator and hopping on the interstate. We're talking about one dusty step at a time through dry, rocky wilderness with a very pregnant lady. And I know personally from walking with my wife through her four pregnancy, uh, pregnancy, pregnancies, including swollen ankles, wow, shortness of breath, and frequent potty breaks. Nobody gets to a Bethlehem quick. Mm. Once you get the faith to start walking out God's crazy word, it may take a minute to get there. Mm. Once you get the faith to start walking out God's crazy word, it may take some time to get there, right? And let's be honest, waiting sucks, but remember, waiting faith. Waiting doesn't mean sitting around scrolling Twitter or uh, <laughs> binging HBO, waiting means service, right? Get used to saying, how can I help you? Do you need anything else? It would be my pleasure. Waiting always means serving others. Don't waste your wait. I like that. Don't waste your wait. Waiting is where God makes you into who you need to be when he gets you there. That's a fact. For your marriage to be held held in whole. You may have to go to counseling for you to be an effective CEO of the, that future company. You may have to read some books, take some classes, and get a mentor for you to minister with integrity and power to millions. You will have to develop character and wisdom in pri private with him. That's a fact. For you to win back your wounded child's trust. You will have to prove your trustworthiness with patience, endurance, and grace. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, let's not get tired of doing what is good. And at the at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. I like that. <clears throat> Those last five words are the key to the whole thing if we don't give up. That's a, you can't give up if you have faith, right? Faith endures. That's a that's 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 big if but I promise that but I yeah that's big that's that's a big if but the but I promise the payoff which will come at just the right time will be worth the crazy wait. Ask me on ask me on date night when I have to wait for Natalie to finish what she calls her process. Sometimes I uh despair of even ever getting getting a bite to eat. But then she comes down the hall looking like a supermodel, worth it, so worth it, funny, right? The right time is coming. I believe it for you. I believe it for your family. I believe it for your business. I believe it for your spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, financial health. Don't give up, right? A uh, crazy way. This is one of my favorite parts. When God makes a crazy way, woo, crazy way. This is my favorite part. When God makes a crazy way, my God specializes in parting red seas and knocking down walls and multiplying oil you enough for the whole neighborhood to, to bake bread for the whole hood. Now, just playing. Don't let me write crazy faith. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, don't let me write a crazy faith book. 
Right, my guy specialized in baking bread for the whole hood. <laughs> I'll just plan. And giving uh, paralyzed people power to walk home and taking a wet and wavy stroll with a hype um, disciple and making a way where there is no way. But sometimes the crazy way he makes looking look, but the crazy way he makes looks nothing like what uh like we expect. Think about Mary and Joseph again. If we didn't already know their story, we would expect a fairy tale ending once they arrived in Bethlehem. Surely, when they get uh get there, the mayor or a rich wine merchant would roll will roll out the red carpet and throw them a parade and then put them up in the honey, the honeymoon suite at the Four Seasons Hotel. But what happens instead? There were there was no room for them. In the end, Luke, um, Luke 2, verse 7, you may be too young to remember this, but back in the day before smartphones and digital cameras, we took pictures on physical film that then had to uh, be developed through a special process process in in a dark room. If film was exposed to light before, if film was exposed to light before it was fully developed in darkness it would be ruined right that's good the crazy way the crazy way god makes for the mother and stepfather of his beloved son is in the dark room and in obscure obscure and out of the way place where his plan for the world could fully develop let that be an encouragement to you in the darkness i'll underline this in the darkness and obscurity you're awaiting and right now he is developing his image in you that's good joseph and mary's dark room is a stable a stable where farm animals that aren't house broken are put up for the night imagine how much crap there is just uh just uh, lying around i'm sure god had a million reasons for not choosing the rich, uh, the, the the rich car- carton of uh, uh, Bethlehem, right? That's a fact. But I'm also convinced that one was to show his favorite crazy way to bring new life out of the crap. Out of the crap, God brought new life to the the whole world. Out of the crap, God will bring new life to in and through you, right? Out of the crap your family has been dealing with. Out of the crap your business has faced. Out of the crap news you just got at the doctor's office. Out of the crap your childhood, new life is taking root. And at just the right time, it will bloom into the light. If Christ was born into a crappy situation, right? Just imagine what God can do with your crappy situation, right? This is God's crazy way. More times than I can count. I have gotten myself into crappy situations. That's good. Same. <laughs> sometimes it has felt to, sometimes it has felt to me like there was no coming back <laughs> into the light. That's crazy. That's a fact. I felt that way before. That's a fact. <laughs> I almost believe that uh the light that God was uh appealed and replied and, and appeal appealed and repelled by a distinct of my action. I hope there was a better way. And eventually, thankfully, I found out that there is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. This is John 14, verse 6. I was going to one, I was going one way, a way that would end in more and more crap. But then I found out there is another way. His name is Jesus, right? If you are in a crappy situation like I was, you don't have to keep heading in the same direction. You can get on the way, the way of Jesus. It says in dark, it says in a darkness of uh, uh, obscure, uh, obscurity, you're waiting in right now. He is developing his image in you. That's good. Romans 10 um, verse nine says, if you confess with your mouth, um, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. If you have never accepted saving faith in Christ, you can pray with me right now. You can pray with me right this second where uh, you are. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you love me so much. You, you, uh, yeah, I believe that you love me so much. You came to rescue me from my sins, evil, and death by your death on the cross and to bring me new abundant abundant life through your resurrection. I confess my need for a savior and I ask you to become the Lord of my life. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Teach me to trust your word and your guidance, your direction. Right. Teach me to trust your word and your guidance, direction, and your instructions in my life and give to me crazy faith to follow every crazy word you say in every crazy way you lead. Amen. You just took the first step into crazy faith. This will impact you forever. That is a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. Your, etern your eternity is secure. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That is a fact. That is a fact. But your decision isn't only for uh, eventually. It's, it's for right now. You, you now have access to God's very present. His Holy Spirit who is ready and waiting to guide you into abundant life. That is a fact. In case you were uh, wondering, you, you just experienced uh, saving faith. Crazy worship. Crazy worship. Okay, Lena, I'm going to let you. Lena, can you hear me? All right. At the bottom crazy. of 203. So crazy worship. All right. In our Christmas in July or whatever story, Mary and Joseph aren't the only players who get a crazy word from God. Some shepherders get a crazy word in the form of an angel choir. Remember that? Some stargazing scholars from far to the east of Judea, maybe even as far as India, get a crazy word in the form of a never before seen star that appears out of nowhere in the sky to the west. They probably have some crazy words along their crazy walk, and it's a trip that takes many months. So there's most definitely a crazy way in there too. What do they do after God makes a crazy way for them to go to Bethlehem? The only thing they can do, the only thing we can do when God makes a crazy way for us, express our loving gratitude to God in crazy worship. They bring their very best, their gifts fit for a king and lay their gifts and themselves down before the way, the truth and the life. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, <clears throat> Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frac frac frankincense, and myrrh. When I got the keys, keys, keys to the spear bank, events and then we at Transformation Church here in Tulsa and all over the world in Transformation na Nation acted the fool and crazy worship for a month straight. It was the only thing we could do. Our crazy faith unlocked unbelievable and unforeseen blessings of resources, connections, favor, and so much more. And just like those wise men, we were filled with joy. God had answered our prayer. We were blessed. Crazy worship was the proper response to God making a crazy way. Whenever God makes a crazy way in your life, the proper response is crazy worship. Every blessing and promise and provision our God brings to you through crazy faith is intended to advance his mission of saving faith for everyone on earth. What good are luxury cars and custom houses and designer sneakers for your kids without a lasting spiritual legacy of saving faith. What good is a high-powered job if those who work for you never learn how much God loves them? What good is a miraculous healing if you just keep living for yourself? What good is deliverance from addiction if you're not going to help others free of those chains? Remember the progression of crazy faith? We accept salvation through saving faith in Christ. We gain access to the Holy Spirit, our, law, our living guide to God's life in us. We take action in prayer and in real life to obey God's word. God's word. <clears throat> Baby steps. We take authority over anything that stands in the way of God, God's will for our lives. We live in an abundance, a pipeline of blessing to everyone around us. Why? So that every single person we touch with our lives can experience saving faith in Jesus Christ and begin their own progression of faith.
Crazy faith is like a wave. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. Don't take your foot off the gas. Together, we walked in these pages through baby, maybe, waiting, wavy, lazy, lazy, stating, fading, and fading faith. All, our, all on our way to living in crazy faith. But that's not the end. Once you begin to experience God's promise and provision in your family, your career, your neighborhood, your physical health, and so much more, and begin to live in abundance and purpose in the wave of crazy faith, don't stop. Keep your foot on the gas. When Transformation Church moved into the spirit bank of that center, that wasn't the end of the story. God promised us a building, but he wanted us to take the whole block. The SBC sits at the back of a seven building commercial complex that is home to 35 businesses that include a university, military recruiting facility, chiropractic offices, salons, and restaurants. One day, not long after we moved in, I was pulling into the parking lot and God whispered, don't take your foot off the gas, believe me for the whole thing. I had a choice in that moment to be comfortable with what my crazy faith had produced on had produced or to begin the maybe waiting, wavy, active, declarative process all over again, full of trust and assurance for what my crazy faith could still produce. I decided to put my weight on God's whisper and believe that Transformation Church could own and manage the whole complex for God's glory. <clears throat> One year and two months after we walked into our promise, I got the keys, keys, keys again. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to your new normal. This is how it's supposed to be. God isn't interested in blessing you once. He's intent on opening his floodgates to pour down continually, confirming again and again for people ready to abandon hope that he is real. When they all say it's impossible, when the calculations are improbable, when the mountain seems too high, when everything looks just plain crazy, you look them straight in the eyes with your head up and shoulders back and declare this. It's only crazy until it happens. That's a good ending. Uh, That's right. Uh, ah. Yeah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Ah. How y'all feel, man? How y'all feel out there, man? Drop. How y'all feel? Drop, 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 drop one word in the chat box. How y'all feel, man? Just drop one word, in, just one word in the chat box after that. One word in the chat box after that. How y'all feel? Lena had to, I had to pass the, but I had to pass the baton. I had, I had, I had to throw her uh the ball so she could take the shot. I got an assist. Had to throw the ball. Excited. Renewed, faithful. I feel peace. I feel peace. But I'm excited. Um, we literally have about nine minutes left. Before we go ahead and wrap it up, I'm gonna open up the call. Uh, just to ask y'all, you know, what was um, what was some things that stood out to y'all in this chapter, um, that spoke to y'all, and um, how can y'all apply this to y'all life? Um, but we're not gonna take too long on this, so I'm, I'm gonna open up the line. So, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this as well too. That was a good way to finish this book. It was the last word. The, the, it was the last sentence for me. God isn't interested in blessing you once. Sheesh. God isn't interested in blessing you once. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. God isn't blessed, interested in blessing you once. He said, my righteous will walk by faith. But um, let me not talk. I'm going to go last. Uh, anybody want to talk about what they, they, take, they take away from this uh, chapter? Anyone, anyone want to talk about what they take away from the chapter? Just drop, drop your name in the chat box. Um, just drop your name in the chat box. Uh, Jamar, take it away. Let's get it. Man, I don't even know who Jamar is, man. I got OG, OG. <laughs> Let's get it. What's going on, y'all? Um, so, man, the, the biggest part, I'm trying to find the exact wording. Um, but the biggest part that stood out to me was, um, man, it was so powerful. It, I got goosebumps when I heard that, John. It was crazy. Um, 
Oh, not making sense is God's MO because if it made sense, we could take credit. Um, and it just stood so it stood out so much in my life because right now um, I'm getting discharged from the military with asthma, so I'm not able to actually stay in no more. And I'm just asking God, like, why? Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just like, dang, like, and now I have to move off faith, you know, because um, I was just so comfortable in that spot. And now I feel like right now it's just gonna be the the perfect time of my life, especially with the commission and everything that just just dropped with Riyadh and and just being able to uh serve God in such a way that I've never served before. It just feels so crazy um to do it in this way, which I was comfortable going from being comfortable depending on the income to just depending primarily on God. Um, so it's just powerful. When I heard that, it just was like to other people um that that's like that I talk to, and that's why I, I I understood this when it was so powerful, like who you be who you be around and who you tell God's word to. Because I had a choice to stay in. I had a choice to let them give me stuff to stay in, but I chose to take the other route because God was just anointing on my life. People in my family are like, oh like, why are you getting out of the military? Why are you doing that? And I'm just like, it's like dang, like you supposed to, it's like it don't make it don't make sense to them. So <laughs> so but uh it don't make sense to me either, but when you know God when you get to know God and you build your relationship with him, it's a lot easier to to um to make decisions. So but that's what stood out to me. That was good. That's a fact. If it don't make sense, you're doing the right thing. That's good. If it does not make sense and nobody else around you understands it, that's all you need to know God God spoke it to you. Literally. Literally. That's 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 good. He told Abraham to leave your father's house and go to the land that I am going to give you. Abraham left his 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 father's house, went to the land, and God gave him an inheritance there. Same thing. So that's good. You are definitely on the right track. You following the spirit. Um, does anyone else want to go? Uh, anybody else? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, go ahead. All right. You good? Yeah. All right, so um, I'm keep it short, but um, one thing that stood out to me um, from this chapter where it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You know, it's not only when you need something, you should be praying. Even during the good times, you should always um, pray because you never know what could happen. So um, just know that but there's a trip, mind you, you could um get on a plane, you never know what happens. So it's always good to pray for um a safe travel, you know, and that's what I received. And yeah. That's good. <laughs> Let's get it. That's that's my favorite scripture too, Philippians 4, verse 6. That's good. I'll I will look at that every day. Anything that comes to steal your peace, the devil is a lie. Is a lot, <laughs> but let's. Uh, anybody else want to go? Anything that stood out to y'all? If not, yeah, I'll go ahead. I right, take it away. So, what stood out to me was, you know, towards the ending, I feel like the whole thing was, you know, amazing. You know, some of the the whole the whole book, but um, definitely was just like simply keep your foot on the gas, you know, and that kind of led into um, when he said that when he was pulling into the parking lot, he said that God whispered, "Don't take your foot off the gas." believe me for the whole thing. And, you know, that's something that I'm gonna definitely care with myself, you know, for the rest of my life was, it's really because like, sometimes like when God gives me visions, like I like choose which ones to keep, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. exactly. And now that's why I'm just like, wait, God would not give me the, the vision if he didn't want me to keep the whole thing to have the whole the whole cake right so um definitely like just another thing i um highlight was just to put my weight on god's whisper and like like i said just believe him for everything for the whole thing um because like i said he gives you that vision for a reason he doesn't want you to have half of it he wants you to have three quarters of it he wants you to have everything and really it's only crazy until it happens that's always stuck with me for real but yeah that's that's basically what that's good that's a fact it, it is only crazy until it happens 
It's only crazy until it happens. Oh, Andrea, on. I didn't even see. I ain't even see you on, Andrea. I ain't even see you was on. What up, Andrea? Um. Okay, you was iPhone. I was. I was saying who. Who is iPhone? But uh. Okay, no, no, no. You okay? Uh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Um. <laughs> yeah. So, does anybody else want to go? If not, I'm gonna uh go ahead and go. Go on one. Just want to say thank you for these calls, bro. I know I haven't been as consistent, which I would have been, but I'm going to go back and watch the YouTube videos for sure. But I, I, I'm i super grateful for that, bro, for sure. Nah, no problem. Uh, trust me, it's it's all good. It's, it's God. God, trust me, we just vessels. But uh, I'm going to say I'm gonna say this. I do have – I'm going to say so. My takeaway that I got, before we go ahead and hop off, my takeaway that I got uh, that stood out to me the, bo- uh, the most is two things. Like Lena said, don't take your foot off the gas. Believe me for the whole thing. And then I, I got revelation right there because I'm, I'm thinking on my head, like all everybody on this line can say that they made vision boards before. Every Everyone on this line can say that they have things that they wrote down. But sometimes God will do one miracle and make one of those things come to pass. But then you stop believing God and putting your faith on everything else. Like, why would you print out the picture if you didn't know, if, if you ain't believe it was going to come to pass? Why you write it down if you ain't going to believe it, it, it's going to come to pass? See, the reason why you stop, the reason why we stop believing is because <clears throat> we, we worry about how it's going to happen because we think based on our circumstances. But then we forget about how God is supernatural. How your credit score can be saying this, but God say, I own a thousand cattle on a thousand hills and everything on the earth is the Lord's, right? So it don't have to make sense. So that stood out to me because I understand that as long as we put our faith in God, put our faith in Jesus, and and we believe in for the, the, the miracle to happen, as long as we keep our faith fo- focused on him and don't have doubt, he gonna, he gonna make it come to pass. So that stood out to me. And also, God isn't interested in blessing you once. Um, I used to think that, like, okay, cool. God just did this blessing for me. Now I gotta wait. Now I gotta wait a whole couple months, a whole year type stuff. I used to think like that. But now I'm thinking in my head, Jesus is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God blessed me big yesterday, he gonna bless me big today. He gonna bless me big tomorrow. He gonna bless me all the days of my life because if he he said that you will live according to your faith, and if that's what I believe, okay, cool. He he will bless me according to my faith, a hundred percent, because that's my belief. So God isn't interested in blessing you once. So those two things stood out to me a hundred percent. But um, that's that, guys. We actually finished this book. I'm happy for y'all. I'm excited for y'all. Uh, it's really dope. I'm gonna I'm tell you, I'm, I'm telling y'all, it's really, really dope. Like, I'm, I'm telling y'all this. You stands for your own universe. Your own universe. As you guys read in materials and books and stuff like this, and from information like this, you're becoming supernatural. Like, you're, you're becoming um, more, like, understanding who you really are on the inside, guys. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, 2022 is going to be extremely different. Like, y'all going to have testimonies and stories that, like, that's going to, like, y'all going to write y'all, I'm I'm prophesying, I'm going to speak this. Y'all going to write y'all own crazy faith books in 2022. Everybody that that followed crazy faith and read this book, y'all all all going to write y'all own crazy faith book in 2022 of of what God's been doing in y'all life, supernaturally. And... Jamar, uh, for instance, this man just stopped military, everything, only focusing on God. Watch what God does. And watch. Watch what he does. See, when you come to a place where you're at the end of yourself with everything, watch how quick God brings you up. That's how, that's how we have to be. So I'm happy for y'all. I'm excited for y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all this. When y'all go out there in the real world, over these next two weeks, over these next two weeks, control, protect your energy, control what you focus on. Meditate on this book. Meditate on this book. 
Because what life can do, life can make you forget about everything you just read. <laughs> Watch what you pay attention to. Watch what you consume, right? Because life, people can make you forget about every. I'm telling y'all, like, y'all are the first in y'all family to be uh, talking about stuff like this, having conversations like this. So you have to know that you chosen. You have to know that you uh you different. You are the first to be hearing information like this in your family and understanding it, guys. So I want y'all to understand these next two weeks too, ask God to mature y'all. Ask God to mature y'all spiritually. Ask him to mature y'all. God, I'm ready to mature. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, but um, I'm done. I don't really got nothing else to say. I don't really want to talk y'all ears off. Um, I don't really got to talk our ears off, but I'm going to see y'all not next week, but next Thursday. And, um, yeah, let's get it. I love y'all, and um, let's get it. <laughs>